and then as soon as it's done cooing, it drops down and then lets then the music box plays. Okay, so let me try it again. Okay. There it goes. Okay. It lifted that up. It lifted that lever up there. Stops the fan. And now it coos. Coos and gongs. And then as soon as it's done, it drops out of the way. And then the music box starts going. And then it drops into this little, it's got a little notch here. You see the little notch? It's got a little notch there and it goes all the way around. And then when it hits, gets into that notch, it quit that time. All right. I'm glad you understand that now. And we are now at the end of the movie because it says one hour, four minutes. So that's the end of part one. The next part is going to be, I'm gonna tear this all apart. Boy, I'm almost scared to. But, um, tear it apart, clean it, put it back together, oil it, and, yeah, then there'll be another part, and probably another part, and another part, because I'm sure I'm going to goof something up. So, with that... I'm going to go now. Thanks for watching everybody. Welcome back to another movie everybody. Today we're going to listen to some news. After the commercial of course. Rossdale by-election results live, landslide win for George Galloway as Labor condemns MPs as damaging force. So, George Galloway, who's a friend of this show we've had on, he's one of the truth tellers over there in the when he was in the Parliament in the UK, and then he was doing the mother of all talk shows, okay. which I've had a guest on several times. Um, and here he is with his victory speech. Now he's going to be a see member here. of the what are UK we going to do? Kill Starmer. This is for Gaza. You have paid and you will pay I show you price. how this worked you have last movie in enabling in and I don't think I show you very good for so the catastrophe I'll go presently going on do it again in occupied Palestine in the Gaza um, Strip you know, maybe it would help if you get one inside. So when it goes around. Maybe you don't need that guy. See? <laughs> <laughs> what the? But anyway, this lever I'm a, drops. I'm a big fan of George Galloway. And and we're very proud. And so. This and lever, way, I don't think really I showed you. The establishment. So much so. This lever here. The Prime Minister came out and said this. Lifts up. In recent weeks and months, we've seen a shocking increase in extremist disruption and criminality. I don't think I saw already that last, last time. That descended into intimidation, threats, and planned acts of violence. Jewish children fearful to wear their so. school uniform, lest it reveal their identity. Muslim women abused in the street for the actions of a terrorist group they have no connection with. Hopefully, now I can show you this. Is a target. 
council meetings and local events have been stormed. But I think it's interesting okay. that he says that he tries to be like he's even-handed. Most of them have been attacked in the streets for a terrorist group they have no association with. He doesn't say Jewish people attack for a genocide that they don't have anything to do with. Is that, Is that lifts up? He doesn't, he doesn't say, he doesn't make that connection. Okay, here we go. But here, here comes the part about George Galloway. MPs do not feel safe in their homes. Long-standing parliamentary conventions have been and upended it does for safety Cuckoo concerns. and Bell. Bell and Cuckoo. Alarming. And last night, the Rochdale Parliamentary Hopefully returned to Canada, the right way. who dismisses the horror of what happened on October the 7th, right. who glorifies Hezbollah, and is endorsed by Nick Griffin, the racist former leader of the BNP. So, do you see how they're trying to discredit him? Oh, it's alarming. No, it's going the wrong way. It's yeah. alarming that George Galloway doesn't go along with the genocide in Gaza. It's alarming that so George Galloway pretend. doesn't go so along with up. the uh, destruction of it Libya. All the way it's around. alarming that George Galloway that didn't falls go down, along let with the, fan go. the uh, Iraqi genocide and the millions slaughtered in, in Iraq. It's a lot. That's what he's saying. Because you want to see what, what, what gets them upset? Is that George Galloway won't go along with Israel. And he tells the truth about Israel. So, and they call it alarming and shocking, and they try to discredit him as okay. some kind of racist. Anyway, what? Want to hear how racist he is? This is what that's how it them. goes. So the we're gonna take to the first thing we're gonna about do. About Israel. This is what scared. Them. This is what caused them to say that. This is. We're gonna take off. And you're talking, um, to the, so this is him hosting the dance his, uh, floor. Mother of all talk shows. And I don't know what else to call it. And we'll Buddy listen dance to his floor. response. Um, Two clips. And who was responsible for it? And who should have paid? The small one goes should have on top. For it. But given that you've said, That's kind of granted, weird. granted you, and you're yeah, presumably two. saying you because you're Jewish, somebody else's country. I'm asking you, what right did Britain have to grant you somebody else's country? Well, Britain, well, Britain, you could say they didn't have a right, but they came in and dealt with us and with Jews having lost all these rights. And they well, you can say they didn't have a right, but they did, they did it. They did it anyway. They did it anyway. <laughs> But they came in and they did it. So that, that's it. It's done. Wow. So it get that. So okay. so it gets, it gets even better. There's a little bit more of this. Well, I, I see. I'm getting nowhere on this, Alex. So let me deal with your overarching uh, point. Maybe you're just not equipped to deal with the uh, principal point that I have made. The Jews have suffered racist anti-Semitism down the ages in many many European countries, including our own. Uh, they were subject to regular. Uh, discrimination at best and pogrom and murder at most. That's undoubtedly true. The one place in the entire world that Jews were neither some kind of a nor subject to pogrom spring or something. World. In fact, so much was that the case that, goes that there. Christianity came back to power in Spain, in Andalusia, this in the year, um, western extent here. of the Islamic Empire, goes when the Muslims through. left. The Jews left with them like because they so. feared the Christian anti-Semitism, which would be unleashed uh, in the wake of the That's departure of the Islamic in civilization in the West. In that That's in why uh, so many Jews are to be found even today and were to be found in profusion okay. before the creation of the State of Israel in countries like Morocco and along the North African coast. Because that under the protection of the Muslims, the Jews left Europe and went to live in North Africa. The and clean that, that wiped off the map when, when all this is in the sonic cleaner. Had Jews oh yeah, the by the way, Christians and Muslims uh, for yeah. century upon century with a clean clock case or violence or pogrom. So I put the chains in the sonic cleaner. In Europe 
And I made a new bellows for this. I didn't figure you need to see me do this again. Unless you wanted to, but I don't know. I might have to do it again. It's not really working too well. So. And that seems to me to add insult to the injury suffered by a people whose country was wiped off the map. Maybe I just need to work at it. To make way for a Zionist idea, which was granted anyway, to European that's Jews, what I did. Because these were the first settlers. I probably got Jews glue in there or Britain. something. And as you have singularly okay. you know, four times I asked you to acknowledge that Britain had no right to give away somebody else's country, one country given to a second people, the land that actually belonged to a third people. I don't know if this will fit in there. Injustice, don't you think, Alex? No. Nope. Yeah, I, I agree that they didn't have, they didn't so much have the right, but they were stepping in after the Holocaust okay. to grant it to the uh, Jews. But it was, this. it was, it was long before the Holocaust that Britain stepped in. Britain stepped in in 1917 with the Balfour Declaration made by the British uh, Minister Balfour on our behalf to a group of atheists. I took all kinds of pictures Jews too. To the point about atheism because it's now claimed that this is some biblical land right, as if God was an estate agent. The men to whom Israel was promised were atheistic Jews. They were not only not speaking for all Jews, they represented at that time in 1917 a tiny proportion of the world's Jews. Most of the world's Jews supported communist or socialist parties and ideas at that time. The Zionists represented a tiny sliver of Jewish opinion at that time. Yet, Balfour promised them... It's a little the crack. got some cracks in. Without consulting you can the buy these if they're the busted Jewish up. Least of all, Pretty bad, so... I'll put that aside. <laughs> okay, Alex. <laughs> okay, thanks. Okay, okay, good. I got to go. I got to run. Yeah. Thank you. I like something on the stove. So that is what scares the hell out of the establishment. A guy like him, George Galloway, is actually going to tell you the truth and the history behind Israel and Zionism and the conflict that's happening right now, the genocide. I don't want, I don't want to underplay it, call it a conflict. Uh, so so it's a flat-out genocide of murdering by many different means, one by bombing, and another by starvation. Okay, the next and thing I'm going to do. Punishment, and they're doing it against innocent children. A million of the people who live in Gaza are children. And they're starving them on purpose. And the people of Israel, most of them are okay with it. Oh, the people who I are not okay, okay with Whoops. it, the Hasidic Jews, get beaten up. I didn't know I was out of camera. By the Zionist police inside Israel. I, don't, I can't show the video on YouTube because they can monetize it. But, um, so that's what scares the hell out of it. So just never forget, just like they're afraid of Julian Assange, not because he lied. They're afraid of Julian Assange because he's telling the truth. Same thing with George Galloway. They're not afraid of George Galloway because he's lying about Israel and he's lying about Gaza and the Palestinians. They're afraid because he's telling the truth, which is why they have to immediately discredit them. So let me bring in, uh... The, Actually, I think. Well, that was uh, epic. I mean, he, there's a there's a famous video of George Galloway. I just DM'd it to you, Jimmy. Where this was years and years ago, where he found out that a debate partner was Israeli. He was showed up for an in-person debate stuff at Lecture Hall, and the guy at the very beginning mentions that he's Israeli, and George Galloway says, "I don't recognize Israel. I don't debate Israelis," and walks out. Walks out, just leaves the crap. That's it, no debate. He should debate them more often because he can obviously, he's obviously very, very good at it. Um, so we, we really need his skill set there. Um, in preparation for this segment, because I knew we were going to do this, I watched on YouTube some of the mainstream English press in response to this. They hate this I'm not guy, sure if man. you can see me from the camera. Yeah, this looks pretty dark, but it could be. be that. Like, they cannot stand this guy and what oh. it really gave me insight into like okay. their mainstream media over there is probably even worse than ours i mean we've seen that we've seen you know that talk tv host that woman who constantly meltdown after meltdown after meltdown you can never come off you can never come on and then those two guys that um i think it was jackson hinkle went on and and tore apart that you had him on the show reacting to that i, I mean the media over there over. is just awful and 
they yeah. obviously cannot stand this guy. Oh, he's a charismatic person, but he's simplistic and he paints things in very black and white, unsophisticated and terms, here. implying that he appeals to like stupid e people. Again, yeah, hiding behind are, the right. cover of this is all very complicated. And as he just demonstrated in that debate, if you want to call it one, it's not complicated at all. You yeah. can take these arguments apart in two seconds. Man. And he did. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's it's really incredible how they distorted the history. Yes, so the Jews had to pay a special tax in Muslim lands. Okay, first of all, that was very unevenly enforced. Take this washer and off. Of all, can you tell me what was happening in that Persia holds around that time? This washer Jews, holds. Uh, I think we call that this on and it holds this gear on. They were horribly discriminated against in the Muslim world in the Middle Ages. Um, and very often, actually, the Muslims imposed that tax on their own people and not on Jews and Christians because they wanted to stimulate and then trade can take Europe. these but two are. So, you know, I was just in London, and the first place I got booked... This is the snail. Um, this is the rack. Kind of buried in the fine print. So we have a channel patron, Ian Puddick, who has this beautiful old yeah. gin uh, house that he rents as an Airbnb that he gave me for free. And he was uh, very friendly with George Galloway and he was working on the get Um So I'm I'll very glad for into him this a little bit George, more here. Uh, to see them when he was doing a lot of, uh, he was doing a lot of work for uh, Galloway while I'm there. That gear off. Um, but you know, one of the first interviews I did was with a bunch of British uh, guys. Um, outside of the Not World Court of Justice for the Assange okay. hearings were taking place. And I was asking them about freedom of speech in England. And I was mentioning, hey man, I came with a press pass in my baggage. There were certain shirts and things I did with certain slogans I chose not this to bring. Because I know there have been weird cases of people being arrested for, uh, you know, being autistic and saying the wrong thing. And, um, you know, they, they said, really, you know, everyone I spoke to basically said the same thing about this, that there is no freedom of speech per se, that, but it's, ar it, as a result, it's very arbitrary. Like, you might get in trouble saying something in one situation and not in another. It really depends on whether someone calls the authorities and reports you, like people can report you for things you say in England, and then it's up to the authorities whether they want to pursue it. Um, but there have been some absolutely horrific cases. Now I say that because I watched the entire speech of the Prime Minister before we came yeah. on because I knew we were doing there's this. There's a seat and that on speech this. is terrible. On the back side. All right, Rishi Sunak is neoliberalism by way of identity politics made flesh. Um, he is this yes. wealthy there sign is. of privilege okay. um, who hides behind his Indian identity and his trailblazing identity as the first non-white prime minister, which he mentions in that speech, in order to push the most class and economic devoid type of politics right. focus on this us versus them it's a it's a bunch of racists who have the position Try my that special these people have and we have to things. come together the most noble thing in britain's is we've come together as a people and we have britain's from all different backgrounds he did not say one word about class or economics in that entire speech and as an american this Can't is a very which one is smaller and that's somewhat sad and disappointing to see that Britain is so much in the grip of this same hollow neoliberal kind of politics that makes everything about culture wars and racism and racists and any populist movement, any democratic movement. Oh, they might be too big for this. Any by someone like George Galloway that they detest becomes a national emergency of racism. It's a crisis of racism when it clearly I, it, what could be less more racist than to be standing up for a settler colonial project against the Arab people of Palestine um, but 
the, hover the freight, things you know. that he suggests doing at the end of that speech are terrifying because they don't. I'll probably have get a pair, of, order yes, a pair of the clearly, right players. We don't live up to our own First Amendment, but in the end, or you have a whatever law you want to call it. that you can actually point to and say this suppression of my speech is illegal. They do not have any such law there. So it is very frightening when you have yeah, the Prime Minister gonna work. talking about convening task Imagine forces that. to characterize their political opponents Imagine that. as racist Why would they want to work? take action against them when they already enforce uh, actions against people for saying the wrong thing when they feel like Usually I just replace these things in the red. with regular C now clips. Some in Congress want to reduce billions of dollars in funding for patient care. This will jeopardize patient access to quality care, especially in underserved communities. Congress protect these apart. patient access to 24-7 hospital care. Um, here's a little bit more of that speech. So just, I, I don't have the end where you're talking about the scary part. I watched the whole thing. It was about 10 minutes long. Right, right. But here, listen to, listen to this garbage. It sounds like George Bush. These people sound just like George Bush did. And anybody, uh, well, let's, I'll just play for it. We must not allow that to happen. When these groups claim that Britain is and has been on the wrong side of history, we should reject it and reject it again. Because it's true. They have been on... When has Britain ever been on the right side of history? They're on the, just in most recent history, in the last 20 years, they were on the wrong side of history in Iraq. They are on the wrong side of... They are on the wrong side of history in Libya. They are on the wrong side of history in uh, Syria. They are on the wrong side of history when it came to COVID. They're on the wrong side of history when it comes to Ukraine. And now they're on the wrong side of history when it comes to Gaza and Israel. They've always been on the wrong side of history. When, well, when, when, know, is, kind of, when have they ever been on the right side of history? Do you, can you guys think of a time when you, Britain has been on the right side of history? Um, it is quite remarkable because you hear from a lot of conservative voices in England that England has completely given in to the idea of being ashamed of its past. And yet I go to the British Museum, and you know, which is just full of everything the British stole from all ah. of them. And, and, and the narratives around those things are, and yes, this temple was falling into ruins, <laughs> and it was given as a gift by the Ottomans so that we could take care of it for them. <laughs> <laughs> there is not. It, I was actually a little surprised by how self-justifying their little explanation cards were in all of these things. I mean, you go through the Egyptian Hall of Mummies. I'm sure Egypt would love to have those back. Okay, I'm going to work on this for a minute because the these things are there. not easy to get off. I'll come uh, back when I got them off. So that's the kind. Of, what, so that's the kind. Of, so John Stewart said it again. Now John Stewart came okay, uh, back last year. He went on Stephen Got Colbert, all. and he told people yeah. where the virus came from. It came from the Wuhan lab. Stephen Colbert flipped out, tried to stop him. John Stewart wouldn't stop saying it, and so then he was kicked out of polite society for about a year. And, uh -huh. and no, no kidding, it really shook him. In fact, he did an episode about how it shook him, about how people were angry at him for that, for telling the truth about because now people without religion have replaced science as their religion. So science can't be questioned. Science is now a religion, and that's to the people who like to vote Democrat. That's that's a fact. And Carl Jung predicted this, by the way. I'm reading that book, The Undiscovered okay. Self, and he predicted all this, and he explains how this all works. All right, this lever here. And so John Stewart got kicked out of that polite society by people who treat science and government as a religion. Remember, I do this for me too, and so I remember. And trying to get himself this back in. This lever here so that himself back in lifts up. up. A metal on a this arm Nazi. here for the music. John Stewart, that he gave an, an, an award to a Nazi so uh, under the Ukraine war, and he'll never tell his audience the, bird the truth perch. about the Ukraine war. Okay. He also then did uh, promotion PR for the COVID-19 vaccine. I'm guessing I might have to take that vaccine liars, perch off. And they lied to you uh, about almost everything. I don't know. Um, and 
John went along with it as if he was actually curious. Uh, and then he did uh, a tongue bath to two of the biggest blood soaked war. war okay, I'm going to leave that on for a minute. Uh, Condoleezza Rice and Hillary Clinton. Gotta see. So those are the three things he had to do to get back in. And then he did another one where he then went after Tucker Carlson. Now, Tucker Carlson's been doing the best journalism of any mainstream news journalist uh, around for at least, the at least the last three, four, or five years, ever since the Syrian war. And John Stewart, of course, it. has been doing nothing except sifting for the establishment. And so John Stewart uh, then had to come out and say this after... After Tucker Carlson went to Russia and said, hey, it's really nice here. It's nicer than the United States. Why is that? And like a true adult child of an alcoholic, Americans didn't get mad at the people who are making our subway system and our cities failed and filthy and crime-ridden. They got mad at the guy who pointed that out. Tucker Carlson and John Stewart enabled them like a good adult child of an alcoholic. Because the difference between our urinal caked chaotic subways and your candelabra the beautiful subways is the literal price of freedom so oh my god so that's <laughs> so the reason why there's rats and urinal caked subways and filth and crime and graffiti it's because we have freedom i've been to other countries that have freedom they don't look like this no and he's no. pretending that russia is the russia from 40 years ago and meaning it's the communist, it's not a communist state anymore. It's the same uh, crony capitalist bullshit that we have here, except they don't, it's not as bad apparently. Uh, so then uh, here he, he had to do I'm looking for the warning pen. On Hamas and Israel, pretending like they're both equally bad. So that's his new thing now. His new thing now is to try to pretend both sides are just as bad as each other. And let's watch this. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu finally laid out his plan for peace. Benjamin Netanyahu is calling for complete demilitarization of Gaza, as well as Israel taking over security and controlling entry and exit points to Gaza. So your peace plan is a siege. <laughs> a military siege. Do you really think a military solution ends this cycle? So there, so there, there's John Stewart really giving it to Netanyahu the way he deserves. He just playfully roasts him like this was a birthday get together, and he's the official comedian. And his friends at the office said, "Hey, give our guy some shit. It's his birthday." That's what that was like. He'll love it. Ha ha, BB. You know, I'm just kidding. So then he goes on, and here's the real bad part. Look, the Israeli position doesn't seem so tenable. Perhaps I can find some diplomatic leeway in the Hamas position. Israel is a country that has no place on our land. Okay, we must remove that country. Does that mean the annihilation of Israel? Welcome. Yes, of course. I cannot. You know I'll figure it out. I always do. Diplomatic leeway in the Hamas position. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna take out is. So here we see John Stewart for the elite trying simultaneously this. to regain street cred. While also not Gong and bellow masters and winding up in the leather gift suit in the punishment dungeon thing. for another week. <laughs> it's a tricky balancing act. And as I notice, actually have compassion for the guys. You want, I want one while at the same time completely of these the things parallel of with the side. Involved. And it That's looks the, like what John Stewart just did. What? Let me bring in. Since so, it is, it looks is like game now. the star. And his game is to two of them uh, are parallel with the bottom MSNBC too life. and, and he, straight he's up not telling you the true story of what's happening so like, he's pretending like that's both sides good are wrong. but something like that and is not good he's doing it in a, okay. in a way i know you can't see it you would use sure. at someone's birthday party but well, let me throw it over to the boys from new dissonances <laughs> <laughs> i mean he and the rest of these libs in the media they're such anti-racist right they're so anti-racist yet it is concentration camp to be diplomatic towards the people who are torturing them, brutalizing them, surveilling them, bombing them, and now starving them. 
Oh, not too much of Hopefully I can get it out of here. Would you say, hmm, Matt Turner wasn't as diplomatic as he should have been towards his master? That's oh, yeah, what he's I saying, can. but they would never say it in that context. In this context, sure. He goes on in that segment, too, because I watched the whole segment. It was a horrible segment. He goes on to pin some blame on the UN as well. Well, the UN's not helping because there's all this dysfunction at the UN. Dysfunction caused by the United States. The UN is fully unified in, in favor of a ceasefire, except for us. We're the ones sabotaging the UN. But yeah, this was both sizing it all over the place. He just wanted to give his audience the moral cover to throw their hands up and say, well, it's complicated. It's a terrible situation, but there's blame to go around. And we can still feel exactly the way we feel now without feeling too bad about ourselves for it. That was the entire purpose of this monologue. It was really quite awful. Yeah, that is a framing that we've heard forever. And it's something that Israel apologists always hide behind. And he actually says that straight out in the course of that monologue. Well, yes, it's a complicated history. It's really not complicated. Not complicated. It's really not complicated. Mostly European Jews who were not from that region took out what had been done to them by Nazi Germany on a population that had nothing to do with it, displaced them from their homes, drove them out, and established an apartheid state. It's not complicated okay, I got at all. Pictures, so it's I the know. simplest fucking thing in the world. And throughout that, and as Keith points out, the UN segment was so deceptively and okay, now I'm going to take that off, that off, and that off, now, if I can. The more you realize how much of classic Daily Show was probably bullshit, but you just didn't realize it yeah. because you weren't looking for it. I don't know. It. This might because be my now way. You know so much of what he's saying is bullshit. We'll find out. You we'll... look at the tactics he uses. If you know the subject, you know he picked somebody, for example, who can't make an argument. Who's not That's medium, got a good gong too. Good gong spring. To make them look like an idiot in order to discredit the thing he's trying to discredit, and then you look back on the Daily Show, how often they had these mumbling, stuttering people, and now knowing the subjects, you say, well, why didn't he interview this person, this person, this person, exactly. this person? I'm going to give him an argument. And he never does. Yeah, get on my and stronger glasses he's, here. He's ignoring the fact that Hamas's new charter does recognize that. the borders of 1967 which would give the Palestinians the Gaza and the West Bank okay. and Israel the rest, and he doesn't care. Uh, so I'm sure... And, so, go ahead. And the thing that you showed there, I haven't seen that whole monologue, but I've been to five countries in the last 12 months, and the only country that's somewhat like the United States that I've been to was India, a po an impoverished third world country. To say that this is the price of freedom, Greece is not a shithole. Italy's not a shithole. England's not a shithole. They have their problems, but only the United States is the kind of shithole that where you see just crumbling roads and infrastructure. I have not seen that anywhere else in the Western world. I'm here right now in New Orleans. I am telling you, you could go two miles from where I'm staying. I'm near two lanes, so it's relatively upscale over here. You go two miles from here, there are there's there are roads where the asphalt is gone. Where you can see like little chunks of asphalt and it's dirt roads. There is no other Western country that I've been to that is in that condition. And I'm sure the hold of freedom. That's, uh, that's, that's right. <laughs> the price of freedom. Yeah. I'm sure someone expects us to have both sympathy and empathy for how torn poor John Stewart is in the middle of this trying to do the right thing while knowing what will happen to him if he actually does and choosing the wrong thing and then trying to make up for it in this back and forth over and freaking over again what a gripping hero's journey this is for john i'm sure netflix will do a biopic on john and his struggles to keep zionism alive along with his own reputation as a human being alive as well i think it's going to be called lucky yet fucked the john stewart show <laughs> So other people have made lots of points. Let me show this. John Perry says, uh, John keeps up the preferred teaching of the Middle East in general. They all hate each other and have for yeah, a thousand so years. We've tried everything. Imposed borders, bombing, chaos instigation, bombing, arms sales, bombing, imposed leaders, oh, yeah. and well, bombing. Yeah, no. But nothing works. Excellent. Uh, here's three in a row. 
This is so sad. John could have educated people on what is going on instead. He just made a poor joke, but not surprised. Zionists keep playing this clip over and over as if this guy makes the policy for Hamas. That's your point, Russ. He points out to this guy. Anyway, he also said free the hostages, but didn't say a thing about the Palestinians held in Israeli jails. One more. Hamas literally accepted a Palestinian state within the 67 borders. Israel walked away from it. Uh, these last few words, Israel has made an excellent case for the Hamas position on this. By the way, okay. They're, they're starving children, blowing up children, women and children, and grandparents. We're gonna get they're rid of this music box. Them, and they're doing that. They're admitting they're doing this. They're cutting off their water. They're cutting off their food. They're doing this to do what's it, it's called mass punishment, group punishment, which is a war crime. And they're doing it right out in the open. That's what they're doing. They're bombing them, killing them. It's a genocide. There's no other word for this. I guess some people like to say ethnic cleansing because it sounds nicer. It's like the difference between torture and uh, enhanced interrogation techniques. But it's the same thing. You're, you're bombing civilians on purpose, and the ones you're not bombing, you're starving on purpose. Starving. It's like, that, for real, they're dying from starvation. Children. Yay. And John Stewart's like, ah, they're both little, ah, 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 ah. Um, well, you know, that's the New York Times readership, too. I think we're going to do a second on that later in the stream about it. Music wrong, but, you know, um, he has to give his audience this uh -oh, kind of I lost a screw somewhere. cover that the libs always seek, right? We have to feel bad well, about what's going on. I'll have to look for it later. Not good I don't know what happened to But we to can't it. feel too bad about it to the point where we can't mm. stomach a vote for Biden oh, well, because then I'll we're not around Right. Somewhere. So they have oh, to constantly... This keep those two things in their head at the same time. They have to juggle them. Right. Exactly. Right. They have to bear witness to it, but not to the point where they actually abandon the basic premise that Biden is the only thing standing between, uh, you know, us and the hell that will be a second Trump term. And if you get too bitter about this, then you end up like those Michigan voters who vote uncommitted and say they're not going to vote Biden in November. And that's a very, very uncomfortable place for an upper middle class New Yorker to find themselves. Hey, come see us live on tour in Los Angeles, Palm Springs, Stockholm, Amsterdam, Rotterdam, Berlin, Copenhagen, Oslo, Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania, Cortland, New York, Oakland, Pennsylvania. Okay, let me right look at this Pittsburgh, real closely, like, before I take Texas. this off. Go to JimmyDoor.com for a link for all those tickets. Okay, that's all going to be one unit anyway, so I'm safe. Okay, I get it. I'm on a prank show. Fresh produce can't be this low priced. Where's the camera? Where is the camera? Found it. Now, nope, that's an avocado. Produce delivered fresh daily at everyday low prices. So now, uh, as you know, the new game for the establishment, the billionaire class that runs the world and doesn't care about the United States whatsoever, uh, their new game is to criminalize their political opponents. And we've explained to you over and over how they're not only doing it in the United States, but Pakistan, Brazil, okay. and now in the United States, they're doing it not only with Donald Trump, but with the uh, black socialists, the youth group, right I think here. they're called. They're also doing it to stop Cop City protesters in Atlanta, people protesting the expansion of the police state. They're, they're criminalizing who's ever standing up uh, against the establishment, and they, that's what they're doing right now to Donald Trump, and you don't have to like Donald Trump or vote for him. I'm not voting for Donald Trump. I never did. But to see that what they're doing to him, they'll do to anybody who stands up against the establishment in a meaningful way. And the donor class in the Republican Party and the donor class for the Democratic Party, which is the same people, they hate Donald Trump with a passion. Now, there's a lot of theories about that, and one of them is he tells the truth about war and he won't do the wars like they want him to. And another one is he puts an ugly face on the imperialism, so it makes it harder to do that stuff. doesn't matter why. He's definitely an enemy of the donor class, and now they're criminalizing him, and they're doing these frivolous lawsuits. And it's only making people lose faith in the judicial system and their institutions even further. It's not. Uh, it, it, so 
The Supreme Court has now decided Carefully. to delay one of those cases and that Donald Trump won't have to face uh, uh, a trial over it until after the election. The election he'll most likely win, so then he can't be taken into court because you can't take a president to court for crimes until it, that has to be done in the Senate and the House. They, if he's committed a crime, the House and the Senate have All right. Well, the Senate never convicted Donald Trump of a crime. So now they are losing their minds. <laughs> Who's they? The same people who lied to you about COVID. The same people who lied to you about the vaccines. The same people who lied to you about mandates. The same people who lied to you about masks. The same people who lied to you about lockdowns. The same people who lied to you about transmission. The same people who lied to you about contraction. The same people who lied to you about the Syria war. The same people who lied to you about the Libyan war. The same people who lied to you about Ukraine. The same people who lied to you about forced to vote. Okay, I'm going to take a picture are of this. Losing their minds. Okay. We'll because be back after I'm done taking pictures. Pause. The Supreme Court is those fruits, those, okay, those I'm back. Got my pictures now, taken. Now, whether or not you support okay. these protests, they very much this. impose a double standard. Okay, this pendulum thing that's all bent up. Any expression of Thanks. violence is, by definition, it's wrong. It's a threat to democracy. Except like some greases on there. When causes they like, when groups they like, when groups Dirty. they see as supportive of their uh, politics or their political yeah. party do things like that, it is a completely different story. Uh, and with Rachel Maddow, mm. she's she's just built a career on scaring the shit out of people in nursing homes. That, that That's really who actually watches this. I think the last I saw, I don't know what the numbers are now, the last I saw MSNBC... 68 is the average age of the person watching. Um, unfortunately, those people vote, and that is why somebody like Matt Allen. Okay, we're going to do the time side, which is this side. Society who actually look at Rachel Maddow and take her seriously, but it's a group of people that vote in disproportionately large numbers. Yeah, let me just add, um, in response to those videos, it's oh, just so Orwellian okay. because the judicial branch seems to be the only branch of government now that takes its constitutional responsibilities even remotely seriously, even remotely to heart. That's not to say they are perfect. Of course, the Supreme Court has a lot of issues going on. You have Thomas taking bribes from Harlan Crow, who is one of uh, Cornell West's uh, top donors, <laughs> incidentally, as well. Um, but uh, I believe that what Maddow was saying there when she says, well, they know they're going to have to rule against Trump anyway, so they're just trying to grant him time so that he can maybe get the trial canceled okay. if it's after November. That's because the Supreme Court understands stuff, yeah. the hell that will be unleashed upon this country okay. if Donald the Trump is convicted is. of a crime during campaign season. The like, man. they actually fear that because they are actually invested in the stability of these constitutional institutions, these constitutional structures, the functioning of our democratic, quote-unquote, government they're actually invested yeah, in that they actually have the foresight to understand that that will all that come crumbling down on. if a jury actually decides to lock up donald trump yeah. during the campaign that and they on. know that will be very bad for the country the democrats don't care about that okay, they are fully short-served at this point they know biden cannot win and they that know that on. desperate times call for desperate measures and so they are desperate to settle this some other way but it's actually the court who seems to be understanding most of all, most of, uh, certainly more than the Senate or the House, hey, um, what's going to happen in this country if we actually try to throw Donald Trump in jail this year? That's going to be really horrible. That's going to be a horrible thing for this country to go through, and they Gee. seem to be... Now let's see if I like can get this off. Which is more than I could say get for the other two brands. Well, maybe it's because the Supreme Court really, after you're on the Supreme Court, you're on there for life. So you, you, don't, ha you don't have to worry about running for office again, and you don't have to worry about getting donor cash, and maybe they don't really, maybe they just act on the, the, their own partisan or their own uh, political uh, mm -hmm. leanings and the law. 
And instead yeah, of and instead a lot of these guys, you know, I'm sorry, go ahead. Okay. Instead of the wishes of the donor class. So that doesn't really factor in to what they're doing. What does factor in is the law and their their own politics. But you can't really say so maybe Don't that's why take they're this able to off. Act sensibly, way more sensibly than the politicians controlled by the donor class. Go ahead, Keaton. I was about to say, also, you know, it takes a lot of seriousness to actually ascend to the Supreme Court. I mean, you had, you know, Thomas, you could argue, doesn't have any business on the court. But with, with but uh, other than him, I mean, how many people got on to the Supreme Court because their father was on the Supreme Court or their uncle was on the Supreme Court? In the House and the Senate, we see that all the time, right? Well, Governors, right? George W. Bush became governor of Texas. He wouldn't have been that if his father I'm just going right, to leave that on. wasn't who he was. And I'm going to leave the, the, the this piece on. Supreme Court's a much more serious yeah. set of people who actually, I think, do take a certain degree of pride in what they do, which is why, as you mentioned earlier, Jimmy, they upheld Obamacare. And if they were okay. partisan Republican actors, they oh, what I'm going to do down. is I'm going to clean up incredibly the stuff here. Lawsuit that was brought by, I believe, the state of Texas. This was a couple years ago by now. And they voted, I think, And we'll be back when it's all Congress. cleaned up. Hey. Now, they were Republican for me, it's they going to be a couple hours. For you, it's going to be, you know, they could, they that way, right? a blink of an eye. Okay, I'm back. I took it apart. I didn't put it in a sonic cleaner. I just cleaned the holes out and all the pivots, things, and just re-oiled it. Get a little bit too much oil in there. I just gotta wipe it down some. But uh, yeah. So. And I put it back together, and I need to get some parts. Some more, so let me look, what do I got? Put this thing back together. Okay, so, uh, what I'm going to do is what I did with, I believe, the squirrel clock. It had these same, wherever they are, these same little clips that nobody likes unless you have the uh, pliers to get those off. So what I'm going to do is, you see there is no, you can't see, but there's no groove in there, right? Those are like a friction fit thing, so what I'm going to do is if I can find them, here they are. Do what I did last time. I'm going to make a little groove a little groove in here can put one of these e-clips on instead. Hopefully. It worked before, but I don't, you know, it might not work. Oh. 
Oops. So what I do, oh yeah, I can't pull that one out. Hopefully, I can get it in my hand. Hopefully, this one will work. Other one. Just put this one in. Like so. groove in it. This one I can actually take out again and do it better. Well, that shiny spot there is a groove. Right. I'm gonna put that back in. through there. Clip it on. There we go. Done. Fist. I think. I think fist. I don't know. Get my spring.
Okay. <laughs> Oops. Next, I guess, would be this stuff here. The news is over, by the way. In case you didn't notice. This is the hard part here. Oh no, I broke it. Uh oh. What shall I do? I just broke my spring.
see if this works. I don't know if it's going to or not. I think that'll work. Remember how I said? Remember from before? Lever's got to go up. I'll try this again.
Okay, I think. I'm not sure. Something that is not making this go. Okay, well, that seems right. I don't know why it's locking up on me and won't go. this works when I put this together because I don't want to take it apart I don't <laughs> want to deal with that spring again on that thing Thank you. 
That seems to be working. Okay, what's going on? get it right. I'm timing it right now.
That's good. to this because man this thing just runs so smooth so and besides it's got another wood tick another tick clip on there I don't like it But it does run pretty smooth, so I am not. Gonna mess with it. Now the thing is, do I remember how to put that on? I don't remember how this went on. Do I have it upside down? No. The fan was on top, I remember that. in the place. We're going to go on there.
Well, okay. That seems to be working. That's good. Music box. Music thing. Okay. at the beginning of the song. Okay. Gotta 
time it. And this actually shouldn't be too hard. Shouldn't be, but we'll see. Yeah, I think I got it. I think. Yes. Oops, my C clip, my clip came off. Maybe that's why it's not run <laughs> very good. Put that back on.
I'm pulling on it kind of. When it's in the clock, it won't do that. Okay. That is that. I'm going to pause for a minute and I'm going to clean up these people. And the dance floor and this thing that makes them go spin. Okay, I don't even think I'm gonna take them, take them out. The first one of these types too. The, all the other ones, the other ones I have, the two other ones, the squirrel and the, the water wheel. They have gears under here. This rides on this thing and spins them. See, kind of. I don't know, kind of weird, but. I'm going to wash this, and then I'll put this back together. So, pause. 